Hello everyone, welcome to Challenge to Build, and in today's review video, I am talking paint, specifically the Samurai bed coating. I am currently working on a 2004 Chevy Suburban that you see behind me, and in doing so, I have taken some time to try to customize the overall truck, and in one of those um, customizations, I decided to take some of the old faded body fairings on the truck and spray, if I can get that to sit there, a bed liner coating on them to give them this nice, fresh, new textured look. Now there are a lot of different um, spray texture bed coatings out on the market today and I spent some time researching and going through Amazon to find a product that I've never personally used before. Uh, I have experimented with it uh, recently just for this video and uh, I have to say for the price this stuff is pretty uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, if you read the reviews you will notice that some of them talk about the coverage not being sufficient for the can and while that actually is true um, i can kind of support that review the coverage was not as good as i had hoped with the contents in the can but keep in mind that this is not spray paint this is a heavy polyurethane based two-part bed coating so the difference between a lot of the ones that are on the market are they are going to be one part this actually has a hardener that you inject in on the bottom of the can and then apply it. So your coverage area, because of that, because of the thickness of the paint, and then also having some of the hardener take up the space for the actual coating does limit the coverage area. So you are going to need multiple cans for your project. For an example, to do this fender flare with two coats, you're gonna need approximately one can per flare. Now, reading the can, right off the can, um, I was told by an old boss of mine, if you don't know what you're doing, spend some time and read the product that you're using because all of the information that you ever need to really know about a product and how to use it is right on the can. Also, they give you a little instruction sheet on how to proceed. So, right on the can, let's see if I can find it real quick. Yes, right here. Yellow lettering. No primer needed, but much, in all capital letters, much better with epoxy primer. Now, I did not use the epoxy primer on the plastic moldings. So, what I'm going to do today, and in this video is I'm going to coat the bumper. You see the front bumper sitting here. My goal for this video is to do the same painting process on the front bumper using Spray Max Black Epoxy Primer. Also, with the plastics, you are gonna want an adhesion promoter. So that is why there's Bulldog Adhesion Promoter. This is something that I've been using for years. This is a go-to product for the shop and something that I always have on the shelf. So with the bed coatings that are on the market, you're gonna have your one part component coatings and then you're gonna have your two part component, component coatings. Um, Samurai is a two part, it's a polyurethane. The only other one that I believe is on the market uh, that is polyurethane with a two part component system is Raptor, uh, but the Samurai system is a little bit more affordable. Uh, as far as the one part component systems, like I said, I've tried multiple different manufacturers, uh, Herculaner, Duplicolor, and Rust-Oleum. This Rust-Oleum turbo can, I actually just tried this yesterday, and there will be a video about this coming up. This stuff is amazing. The Duplicolor TR250 is my go-to. However, the formula has changed a little bit over the years, but as far as texture and something quick as far as blacking out, uh, I do really like the TR250. Uh, the Herculiner, I wasn't super impressed. This has like a real sandy texture, 
Uh, and again, these are one part components. You can't, get a, you can't beat the quality and performance and the durability out of two part component systems. So that's what we're gonna focus on. Uh, as always with any project like this, you're gonna wanna be safe. This is real deal paint. Um, so you're gonna wanna have a real good respirator with the proper cartridges. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you have uh, protection on your hands with gloves. And if you need to wear long sleeves, uh, a cover suit, depending on how big your job is, and um, safety, 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 safety. Now that all of that has been taken care of, let's challenge the build. Now with any good paint job, the quality and the finished result ultimately boils down to the prep of the part that you are painting. I don't care how good of a painter you are, the quality in the paint job will come from the quality in the prep. The more time you spend in the prep side, the better off your paint job will be at the end. For the bumper, the products that you see here is what I use to prep the bumper. Now the bu bumper has already been in prep stages for the past couple of days. Uh, what I ended up doing was you saw me taking the caulk gun and actually I'm using kind of an odd item. This is a polyurethane sealant from PNL. This is actually the roof and flashing um, sealant. I've been using this for a couple of years. This is a polyurethane based sealant. The downside of this is the time in which it takes to dry. It takes a long time to cure out, but the durability is there. Uh, so what I did was I filled the seam where the bottom plastic met the bumper. It was real wide, so I softened it up and actually kind of like smoothed it out using this. As far as sanding and scuffing, I am using Door Gold 120 grit sandpaper. I'm using a more coarse grit because I am going with the texture finish, so I'm not too concerned about sanding scratches. If you were actually trying to color match your bumper, you would want to use a completely different grit and a completely different method in prepping this. Also, a few days ago, this bumper is plagued with rust, so I treated the rust on the inside and some of the outside with Coraseal. I actually have a whole video on this product itself. This stuff is amazing and highly recommend it. After all of that, I wiped it all down with acetone and rags, and now I am ready to actually start the painting process, which is going to start with adhesion promoter. I'm going to use the Bulldog adhesion promoter to coat the plastics. Once this tacks up, I am then going to go for the Spraymax epoxy primer. After that, obviously the top coat. Now, one thing that I like to do with the spray cans is when I get them, I actually turn them upside down for a while and then rotate them over the course of a few days to help get the contents of the can moving around. You figure they sit like this and store like this, especially with something like this, the polyurethane bed coating, you're gonna wanna flip them upside down. So this way here, everything starts to flow. And then when it comes time to shake them, everything is kind of moving around a little bit more. So now it's time to actually paint. One thing that I forgot to mention, when I wipe this down with acetone, I am not recommending that you wipe down your substrate with acetone. That is something that I have used a lot in my experience, and you have to be careful using it on certain materials, especially when it comes to plastic. So instead of using an acetone, you may need to use a wax and grease remover or some other material. So make sure you do your research in what you're working on to use the right product so you don't cause more harm. Remember to safety up and wear a respirator.
Now you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure you're in a well-ventilated area or outside like today. Thankfully, I have a beautiful day and you can kind of see the wind moving, which is actually causing me to use a little bit more material because I have to be closer, but it's a beautiful day and I'd much rather be doing this outside and uh, enjoying the sunlight. So now we're gonna let that sit for about 10, 15 minutes. The can actually says you can paint after five, but I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll come back and then I'm gonna coat actually the entire bumper, plastics and all, with the black epoxy primer. This way here, we get a nice solid base of black and then we'll top coat it. Now to help pass some of the time, we're gonna start preparing the black epoxy primer from Spray Max. Uh, they recommend shaking the can for a little bit. I've already been kind of shaking it here on and off camera, getting it ready to go. Like I said, I like having the stuff upside down periodically. So this way here, it helps get some of the thicker material from the base kind of moving around, shaking it up. Um, I actually used Spray Max's Clear 2K Glamour Clear uh, just recently, and I was super impressed with the overall product, which made me get the epoxy from them. And uh, remember, it is extremely critical these are two part component systems. So they have a hardener. If you forget to harden the paint and then apply it without the hardener, it will not dry. And in order to apply the hardener, they give you a little red cap. It goes on the bottom of the can. Once it's on there, you wanna hit it. On the bottom of the ground and then push it down a few times while shaking it because that is now adding the activator to the epoxy primer. They actually say the pot life on this, once it's activated, this can will stay good for four days. So you can use it on multiple different projects. What I would recommend is if you plan on activating a can and are going to use it, Make sure you have your projects ready to go. And if you're doing smaller projects, make sure you have multiple projects ready to go. So this way here, you get the best bang for your buck. I'm primarily focusing on the metal and this bottom plastic trying to even out the black because obviously the top plastic is already black and uh, just like the clear coat this stuff is pretty amazing they give you a little dial on the top of the can to be able to dial it in minimum or maximum and the pattern is awesome and uh, yeah this is awesome stuff Now I've probably used about three quarters of a can on this bumper. So that will give you some kind of insight on how much you would need for your project. And I did more or less one coat over the whole thing and then put two coats over the metal. I would say probably now about an hour has passed and this stuff dries pretty quick. Uh, I'm gauging it just by touching it by my fingers and uh, it was practically dry when I was done spraying it But I gave it a good hour to gas off and now for the reason why you started watching this video Finally getting to the samurai top coat like I said earlier in the video. It's all about the prep work 
This entire video has prepped for this point with all of the information that I gave you in the beginning, the actual prep work, and now here we are finally able to apply it. So if you have taken that scroll bar and scrolled all the way to the end of the video to see this part, you need to go back and you need to watch the entire video because there's a lot of information regarding how to do this and on the product. So now we get rewarded by doing the top coat. Now with this bumper, this is a front bumper off of a 2004 Chevy Suburban. I am going to try to top coat this with two cans. Now I think it's absolutely critical that you shake this stuff for a long time, as long as you possibly can. So this again is not spray paint. So I have another can back here upside down. Uh, I've been experimenting with this product the last week or so, and I'm finding the, the longer you shake it, the better it sprays. In the reviews for this, there are comments in that it doesn't spray well, the tips clog up, the coverage area isn't that great. And while some of that bears some weight, I think a lot of it can be worked around because this is a bed liner coating. So we're gonna get into it right now and I'm gonna go ahead and activate this can. Uh, the nice thing about the Samurai kit is they give you two different spray nozzles in the top, top of the can. Uh, one that has a fan pattern and then one that's more of a traditional jet style. Uh, because of how thick this material is, I had better luck using the fan pattern. And honestly, the fan pattern will also get into them tight to reach spaces uh, depending on how you use it. So that's the one that I'm gonna use. And what's cool about it is you can actually spin it too. If you grab, you can get a hold of it. You can actually spin it so that way you change the pattern from uh, horizontal to vertical just by simply spinning the cap. Pretty cool. And just like the Spray Max, this is two parts. You're gonna hear me say it over and over again because it's it's gotta be said. Just like the Spray Max, you gotta activate the can. The only difference is the Spray Max activated from the bottom. This one activates right from the top. The red cap is on it from the factory. So what you do is you turn it upside down. They give you a nice cap to be able to hit. And then boom, you activate it. Also a tip, quick tip of the day. Once you activate the cans, keep the caps, get yourself a Sharpie, and then write, activated, and then the day and the time in which you activated it, this way here, you will remember and you will be able to use this later on in, uh, in your project. Same thing, hit it once, and then I like to hit it while shaking. So now this is an activated can. We're gonna shake it for another three to five minutes and then we're gonna top coat. And then once you activate the can, you pull off the red cap and then place on the nozzle that you wanna use. Like I said, I'm gonna use the fan pattern nozzle. So I'm gonna use my first can as a cut-in can and hit the hard to reach areas. So I'm gonna target the pockets this way, this way, and this way, same thing with this little pocket here. And then probably by then I might need another can. I'm gonna use the other can to top coat evenly, going left to right, right to left, maybe going this way. It's gonna just ultimately determine on your style of spray. And then before you place the nozzle on, be make sure you're ready to rock and roll. And then pointing it away from you, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to push it a couple times because you're gonna release whatever little bit of hardener was left in there. And then now you're ready to go.
And I can already tell you, this is, um, uh, let me think, one, two, three. I think this is my fourth can that I've used of this. Now I've had this stuff turned upside down and rotating it for the last couple of days. And I've spent a lot of time shaking this. And right off the bat, I noticed a huge difference in this can's performance compared to the first can's performance. This is spraying way better than the first can I ever sprayed. Uh, now I'm kind of amazed at how well this stuff is moving. Like, I have a lot of I have a lot of material left, and uh, wow, uh, big big change. So, key, turn them upside down, get that material flowing, a couple days, and shake, shake, shake. So that was one can. One can did all the cut-ins plus one coat on the entire bumper. So considering my first experience using it on the fender flare, now we've got one can doing one coat on the bumper rather than one can doing two coats on a flare. Shake, shake, shake. Also, I can already notice, notice a huge improvement on the overall finish, applying this over the black epoxy base coat primer. It goes to show you, you have to follow the instructions. This is gonna look amazing. So it's been about 20 minutes. I've already gone ahead, gone ahead and activated this can. I'm in the final uh, few minutes of shaking. I'm gonna get ready to put the nozzle on and we're gonna go for coat number two. Coat number two, I am primarily worried about just the overall exterior finish. I'm not gonna cut in. I'm not gonna do any cut-ins on the bottom. I'm going to just paint the outside of the bumper. And then once I get down to the bottom, whatever paint falls into the pockets is how it's gonna look because I'm concerned more with this area here across the top and this area over here because that's what's gonna be seen. So I'm more concerned and focused on visual line of sight stuff rather than second coating the entire bumper. Uh, considering how successful I was with the first can, I think, uh, I think the second can we'll see, but it should go just like the first. And once this is done, it will look pretty good. And here we go.
And there we go, we got successfully through two cans. The second can did give me a few problems, um, but nothing that couldn't be overcome by turning it upside down, cleaning out the nozzle, and then shaking it out. Uh, there are a few bigger splatters throughout, but overall the consistency for the bumper is very uniform. Coverage looks great. And uh, yeah, Samurai bed coating for the price, two part polyurethane. I don't think it can be beat. Thing looks awesome. So that is going to wrap up this review and how to video on the Samurai two part polyurethane bed coating. Uh, you could probably do something like this easily within a day as far as the entire project from prep to paint for this project. Prep it, sand it, Bulldog Adhesion Promoter, Spray Max, Black Epoxy Primer. I think this is a key component. Well, they're all key components, but this definitely from what I was spraying without it to what I sprayed with this, big difference. And then obviously what this video was about, the Samurai bed coating. I will be buying this again. Uh, the first can, wow. The second can was still a wow. It was actually better than my previous initial trial with it. So definitely turn them upside down, shake them, shake them, shake them. I'm gonna say it again here at the end. Um, remember, Everything starts with the prep. The final product is what the prep is. So there it is. It looks beautiful. It's glimmering. I can't wait to put it on the truck. Uh, I will say that the drying time, it says dry to touch 30 minutes, dry to handle one hour, full cure seven days, pot life four hours. Big difference from four days. So keep that in mind when you're doing your job. It still feels like there's a little bit of contents in this one, but this one was one that was giving me a little bit of problems. So that's how we're gonna wrap up the, the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. All of the links for the products used in this video for this bumper will be in the description below. They are Amazon links. So all of this can be found on Amazon. They are affiliate links, which will ultimately help support this channel. So that way you can see more content like this. So please, if you're interested in anything that you saw, click the links below, support this channel. And uh, yeah, now it's time for you to go out and challenge your build. My name is Paul Michael. This is Challenge to Build and I will see you in an upcoming video. Thanks for watching.